This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to the Business for Superhero Show. I'm Vicky Fraser, and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. Hello. Um, we're drinking, what are we drinking? Tea. Tea. Because it's 7 a.m. Ah, oh, jeepers, it's early. It's a bit early for you, isn't it? It's a bit early for me. I'm not used to this. I'm normally kind of crawling out of bed at 8 o'clock so that I can start work about 9. So, recording podcasts at 7 o'clock. I'm basically just going to sit here and drink tea. Well, the goal was to be recording a podcast at half past 6, so we failed miserably at that. Miserable <clears throat> failures. Because last night there was a fox chorus. Yes. Uh, the screaming fox chorus. That was lovely. Which sounded like it was at the bottom of the stairs. Mm-hmm. Um, but then this morning there was an owl festival. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. A chorus of owls and there was screeches answered by twitwoos mm. and lots and lots of them. And it's very cool. So yes, it's been a... And then there was cat wailing as well. Much cat wailing. And there is now a queue in the corner of my office for the bowl of water. I've got a feeling there's probably going to be some cat shenanigans in this podcast. Yes, because whiskey is hogging the bowl of water purely so that Noodle can't get to it. Yeah. Because she's, she's, she's a bit nice like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, so what are we reading at the moment, Joe? What are you reading? I'm between books. I have just finished, oh gosh, Stranger in a Strange Land, which was terrible, full of so many problems. It started off well, though, didn't it? started off well and just degenerated into ah, rubbish. Okay. Just misogynistic. Um, 60s, if only people could get over it, we could all just have sex with each other. It would be great. And it's just like, really? <laughs> um, very sort of zeitgeisty, hippie-ish, and just rubbish. Cool. Okay. Uh, so what are you going to read next? Um, I don't know. I've got a big success, a big list of books that you keep telling me I should read, so I should probably read some of those. Yay! Because otherwise the list is just going to get bigger, and it'll be a problem. <laughs> there is now aggressive sniffing going on in the corner. Noodle is looming over whiskey, and I think there's about to be a fight. It's going to be a fight. <laughs> um, so I am reading at the moment. I read, I read two and a half books on holiday, which was really nice. Nice. Um, but at the moment, I'm reading Jingo by Terry Pratchett, which is great because um, Terry Pratchett had things to say, and I don't think it's ever been more relevant than it is right now. Um, what with you know the state of absolute state of people so <laughs> um it's really it's really good and the non-fiction book that i'm reading i'm still reading don't touch my hair by emma de Beery, uh, which is absolutely brilliant <clears throat> for many reasons um not least of which is that it's a totally different way to look at history she's looking at history and colonialism and um racism and sexism through the lens of hair and specifically black women's hair and it's really really interesting um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit because um, she also talks about all kinds of other things. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm reading. And Quarantine Chronicles, we're not really... I mean, we're going back into lockdown again in some places. Who the hell knows? Yeah, we've just been on holiday. We were we camping. Have. It was beautiful. <gasps> it was so great. It was so great. And we'll talk a bit about... We're actually doing a short podcast today. And that... Because we haven't got much time. And... That is what we're going to talk about. But um, also I have been getting used to spinning on my trapeze again. I did a bit of trapezing last night on my new rig nice. and felt sick. So I need to get used to spinning again. And the house while we were away has been transformed. Well, one end of it. One end of it has been transformed. So the sole plate is all in along the front. And then along the gable end, the one that water always poured in when it was windy and rainy, is almost finished being weatherboarded. Looks lovely. It looks Gorgeous. So um, I will be posting pictures of that at some point. If anybody lives in the area and needs a recommendation for someone who can do such work. Ken Milloy. Ken Milloy. He's really great. Top chap. Mm. You were supposed to fill that gap. Was I? Okay, sorry. (laughs) I'm I'm not really with it yet. Okay. Um, Okay, so this episode is entitled The Importance of Breathing, Mm. which seems obvious... But I think a lot of the time, we don't just take time to breathe. And that was fairly apparent last week. Yeah, society has kind of taught us to be active and to be 
pushing and to fill our time with everything and to move on to the next thing really quickly and to, you know, there's, there's a lot of that, you know, hustle, hustle, move faster, get mm-hmm. stuff done, move on, next thing. So that you can, and, and we call this progress. Yes. And which seems to me, the more I think about it, to be just ludicrous. And this, by the way, is all a hangover from um, colonialism, really. And this because I'm, I'm learning a lot of history at the moment, like real history, not the history that we're taught in the whitewash history that we're taught in schools. And um, reading Emma de Berry's book, she was talking a lot about because she's looking at the world through the lens of black women's hair. There's been in recent, well, since I guess since slavery and the America South, really, there's been this idea that there's no time to do hair. And that's a really Western European idea, because Western European hair generally, apart from mine, which is feathers, doesn't generally take much time to do. But Afro hair needs more care. Needs more attention. Needs more attention. And that was built into the very fabric of African societies. It was like a social thing and people, you know, got together and did hair, and that's a very simplistic way to put it, but... And then, you know, our Western way of being and working is like you've just said, we cram so much stuff into everything. And, you know, even our school system was set up, and this is something I've talked about a lot, um, even before I started reading the stuff that I've been reading about um, colonialism and all the rest of it, but our current school system was set up in Victorian times not to educate people, not for universal education, not to create scholars of the world, not for some big lofty goal, but to create people who would behave themselves in factories and shops. Hmm. That's what the system, that's what the, our current education system is based on. I'm not saying that's what it still does, but that's what it was based on. And it was all based around this kind of working all the hours that you can, um, almost indentured servitude. It was like exploitative labor really um and it was exploitative labor back then um and you know you could say that a lot of jobs now are exploitative labor it's like why are we working all of the hours yeah to do what to get what do you remember all those i mean i wasn't around in the 50s but you know when the labor saving devices were you know all the thing and it was like oh we're gonna have this and we can have a kitchen thingamajig and we can have dishwashers and it's going to free up all of this time that we're then going to spend having a nice time a nice time and recreation and talking and playing with kids and, and just you know reading books and having a nice time and it's just all it does is made more time for work i know and it's really funny because i remember if you ask people what has what technological advancement has made the biggest difference to society, most people will say the internet or mm. computers. Actually, it's not. The thing that made them that's made the biggest impact on the way we live our lives is the invention of the washing machine because it freed up women's time mm. to move out of the house and into work. And it's like, actually, is that a good thing? <laughs> because um, because apart from the fact that traditional women's work has always been undervalued if valued at all and it's not even included in gdp and don't even get me started on what a fucking clusterfuck that is um because you know can you imagine what happens when women's work disappears traditional women's work anyway so that's a whole different thing but it's this whole last week on holiday i did a lot of thinking about time and how we spend it and even the fact that we talk about spending time like it's a commodity and that again reading Emma de Beery's book that's not how traditional African societies view time it's like they see it as creating time to do this that and the other and the day is divided up by tasks that need to be done not by time slots that need to be filled and I love that idea and I'm like and that must have been that must have been the basis of everybody's day until a certain point it's like when did when did the you know the Western world and well, the colonial world, I guess, decide that we were going to just turn time into some kind of a commodity? Hmm. And it just is biz- when you think about it like that, or when I think about it like that, it's bizarre. Because I would much rather have a day that was like, okay, today I need to accomplish these three things, and it doesn't really matter when. Yeah, it doesn't matter what time you start, what time you finish. No, accomplish those three things, and you've had a good day. Yeah. And so that is what I am now working towards in my business and in our life. That's what I want you to be able to do as well, um, which is one of the thing, one of the reasons that I'm doing. And I'm, I'm getting there. I'm much better than I used to be. I don't work like 12 hour days anymore, 15 hour days no. anymore. Um, but I'm still busier than, you know, busy. And sometimes it feels like busy without purpose. Yes. Busy with purpose is fine. 
but busy without purpose it isn't. And the last week, I spent a lot of time at sunset down on the estuary, just watching the tide go in and out. Yeah. And it just got me thinking that it doesn't matter what we're all rushing around doing, the tide still comes in and out at the same time every day. And there are natural, there are natural rhythms of life that that we don't seem to pay attention to anymore. Hmm. And I think that's sad, and that's not the way I want to live the rest of my life. I've lived this, you know, this, I guess the first half of my life has been to other people's schedules and to other people's timetables and to my own imposed timetables based on, you know, what society tells me it should be. And I'm done with that. (laughs) Done with that. That's going to be a difficult transition, but I think it's, it's a worthy one. Yeah, I think so as well. And I want that, I want that to be something that you can do as well, because there's no point in me living to my own timetable if I'm like, oh, you know, because I want us to be able to say, you know what, let's go to the beach for the day. Yeah. And for you to be able to go, yeah. Yeah. And as long as there's nothing in either of our diaries, I'm not talking about absolving ourselves of all of our responsibilities. Yeah. But we can just go, you know what, we're going to have the weekend in the middle of the week. The other thing I liked about um, the, what Emma Dabiri mentioned in her book in the Yoruba Society was always based on a four day week. And I'm a big fan of the four day week. (laughs) And, you know, I know a lot of people are a big fan of the four day week. And I would like. Four day working week. Yeah, four day working week, yeah. And that's what that's what I would like to do. So that is what I have been thinking about, and I guess really for this podcast. I mean, what what do you think? I, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it's important that um, people get time away from their regular lifestyle in order to work out what kind of lifestyle they want. I think it's very easy to be railroaded and just sort of slot into a position in society whereby you fulfill some role, whatever that might be, um, you know, whether it's parenthood or, or businessy or, or, or services or whatever. But um, I think it's very easy to just get dropped into this position um, and not really think about it, not really make decisions, not really consciously decide that, yes, this is in fact what I want to do. You know, is it, is it what you want to do or is it just what happened? Yeah. Um, for most people, it is what happened. I think for most people, it is just what happened. For a long time, for me, it was what just happened. It's like you go to school, you go to university, you get married, you have children, not in my case. but <laughs> And that's another thing. I don't want to like sit here and go, oh, yes, it's easy for us to do this because we haven't got children. I know that it's more difficult for people with children because, you know, there they've are... Got, they've got further responsibilities that we do not. Yeah. Having said that, though, there are still conscious choices that everyone can make as to how their lives want to be. I know that one of my um, clients is homeschooling her daughter because she wants a different kind of lifestyle for her. And, you know, good for her. Mm. And if that's what people... Because, yeah, that's a big undertaking. I'm not suggesting that everyone can or even should do that. Or even that you drop out of, you know, the society's expectations and all the rest of it. But what I am saying, I think, is what Joe's just said, which is really think about the life you're living. Are you living for you with your purpose? Because if you don't have a plan for your life, you're going to fit into somebody else's plans and they definitely don't have a plan for your life. Yeah, you'll just be slotting into their role, doing the things that they need doing. Yeah, and it's not about like knowing what you're going to do for the rest of your life. That's not what we're talking about here. It's about, I think we're talking about living with purpose, whatever that purpose might be for you, and deliberately... I'm making decisions instead of just sleepwalking through Mm. life. I think it's the sleepwalking through life thing that I think is the most tragic thing of all. Yes. And I I wouldn't be surprised if more than 90% of the people out there are just drifting, drifting, living their lives, things are happening and they react and Mm. at no point do they kind of go, okay, what do I actually want? Yeah. Where do do I want to be? How do I want to live? What do I want my my life to look like? And we're not judging those people at all because... It's, it, it, that's what society is designed to do to people. It is, and <laughs> you know for. what? A lot of you know a lot of those people may, may be really happy, and if that's the case, that's great. Mm. But if you're not happy or not as ha- or not feeling, I don't know. Happy is a funny thing as well because you can't be happy all the time. Mm. It's like you can't be productive all the time. You can't be anything all the time. The idea of being happy all the time is unrealistic, um, and also nobody would get anywhere because a bit of unhappiness and discomfort is what drives us. <laughs> Motivating. Yeah, but I think if you know, if you're not, if, if you're feeling dissatisfied, mm. do something about it. And that's, that's the thing. I think a lot of people are dissatisfied and waiting for somebody to come and fix it for them. I think as well, the first step for me is if you're a small business owner, um, you need to design a way 
of giving yourself space. Um, you know, I've got, I've got a good friend, Richard, who has a small business and he never takes holidays because he can't, because it's his business and he runs it and there's no way he can take a holiday because then his customers don't get what they need. Um, and that's just a ridiculous way to live. Oh, that's, that's crazy. You've got, you've got to sort out a way so that you can have a holiday without things collapsing. Yeah. Um, that you use that holiday, not just to, you know, I mean, use a couple of days lying on a beach, getting a tan and collapsing in a little heap if you want. But use it as space to think. But use it as space to think. Yeah. Like, kind of like we did, because we didn't actually deliberately go, we deliberately went away and did very little. Yeah. But I did, as a side effect of that, quite a lot of thinking. We did quite a lot of talking about what we wanted. And it would have been easy like. for us to go away and say, we're going to do a walk, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do, you know, we could have scheduled all of our time, we could have filled it all up, we could have had a little calendar of things we're going to do on holiday, and it would have been kind of like work, but somewhere else. Yeah, and we did do a lot of things, but we did. We, did. we decided on the morning, yeah, apart from one day where we had to book some bikes. Yeah. But yeah, but I, I have now, for the first time, that holiday, for the first time, I didn't, apart from once or twice when I just thought I don't want to come back to 50,000 emails, <laughs> I didn't even look or think about anything mm -hmm. um, because for the first time I had designed my business in such a way, and this is largely thanks to Harriet, who is amazing. Hi, Harriet. <laughs> Hi, Harriet. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, and like, I just, I'd scheduled all my emails in advance. So yes, I had a bit of extra work to do before I went away, but I just went away and I was like, I don't have to do anything. Don't have to, don't have to keep an eye on this. No. And the only thing that I missed, I missed writing. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I was going away for any longer than a week, I would, I would find take a, something. Find a way to write. Yeah, find a way to write. Um, but other than that, it was just brilliant. And so I think what we're saying with this, the importance of breathing, we're always inhaling when we're working. That's what it feels like. We're mm -hmm. always like, you have to find time and space. You have to make time and space. Exhale. Breathe out. Think. <laughs> and think about what you want. And think about the fact that we are not living with our natural life cycles and living cycles. This isn't like woo-woo nonsense. It's, you know, you think of circadian rhythms and things like that. We are not, we're forcing ourselves into boxes that we're not meant to be in. Mm. And I think that's why people are stressed and tired and sick and all of that kind of stuff. So think about what you want. I think that's the takeaway for this week is really think about what you want from your life and your business and how you can make it happen. Mm. Um, and just very quickly, we have a review. Five stars. Awesome show. Uh, great business advice. Definitely an essential listen for any business owner. Funny and educational. What's not to like? And that was from Mindlag on October the 3rd. Yeah. Thank you, Mindlag. Thank you, Mindlag. Um, coming up, coming up. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about why just be yourself is astonishingly crap advice. Okay. And Sounds what good. the truth of the matter is. Um, I have lots of things to say about that. And in the meantime, you can join my Rive, Rive, Rive lighting sessions at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash power hour. If you've listened to every episode, email me with your postal address and I will send you a special silly gift. And if you like this podcast, please go and subscribe and leave us a rating and a review. Yay! And yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you, Joe. No worries. Got up early. Did stuff. Oof. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. Mm -hmm.